back from years later. He is, yes, I guess. I don't know where they are. Dallas people are both talking about it. Oh, okay. We have a lot of other problems since then. Could you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you everyone for being here and those that are watching on camera. And speaking of the camera, I hope everybody at home that uh, does watch us has better viewing. We have a new camera that has been installed. The problems that we have with the audio sometimes is usually not our problem. It's usually Mediacom if you watch that venue. Last meeting, YouTube itself was having technical problems at their end. So the camera has been donated by an anonymous person, and or, uh, so we appreciate that, and hopefully everyone at home has a better view of my smiling face. So anyway, the, uh, you know, several meetings back I had mentioned that uh, I was ex excited about 2021 coming for Herman. You know, that there was many new businesses coming, and some very positive things going to happen with tourism and other things. Well, you know, it's only the start of February. And just in the last week, week and a half, you know, a few weeks before that, ARB signs used to be on 4th Street. It has expanded to the Bavarian Hill Shopping Center to a much larger place. The Quilted Bee uh, Quilt Shop is also opened out in the Bavarian Hills. Uh, uh, shopping center. Uber Knock and Tasting Room is opened on Schiller Street. The other new quilt shop, uh, forget the name, something owl, is opened on Schiller Street. And the bakery, of course, opened Sunday with a re response that was phenomenal, and they will be open starting this Wednesday. So those are just some of the things that are already happened, and it's just February. Many of the guest houses and B&Bs have switched ownership. There's uh, several other businesses and other things that are coming to Herman in the spring and, and summer. I ask that you please support all the, all the new businesses, and of course, all the businesses that are existing. You know, if you can, please shop in Herman first. I know not everything is available in Herman, but please support our local shops, stores, restaurants, and so forth. Everybody knows that it's really bitterly cold out. It is February. Apparently this is going to be with us for some time, so please look out for your neighbors. Uh, I don't, you know, try and keep your sidewalks clean if you can. And the city road crews are going to do the best they can to try and keep our streets as safe as they can. But uh, I'm docking job and uh, anyway please be safe that's all I really have city administrator report yes sir so I'll give everybody a heads up the water department is going to be installing water mains on both sides of Market Street from 3rd to the alley between 5th and 6th this is because MoDOT is going to be doing an overlay on, on that section of 19 down to H and then from the bridge east on 100 to reserve. Uh, out in the middle of Market Street there's an old six inch cast iron water main that needs to be abandoned. So we're going to put new eight inch water mains on each side of Market, replace the uh, service lines so we don't have to dig up uh, in MoDOTs right away after that's all done. We need to do this for a long time. As the uh, mayor mentioned, I want to thank the street department for their work on the snow removal. Uh, it is going to be fairly cold for the next few days, and uh, think of all the uh, city employees that are out in this weather. It doesn't, work doesn't stop because it gets cold, and also bring your pets in when it gets fairly cold. Uh, the, other than that, I had a hazard mitigation meeting Tuesday for Gaston County, and our annual insurance audit is Wednesday. That's all I have. Okay.
public comments? Um, I do have a card from Mike Sloan, but it's in response to his items on the agenda. So you don't want to wait on that then? I would, I would suppose. Okay. Okay, let's move on to ordinances. Okay, on for second reading, bill number 2021-02, an ordinance to provide that the city of Herman, Missouri will participate in the 2021 Show Me Green sales tax holiday. Any discussion? I move bill 2021-02 to second reading. I'll second. Motion's been made and second. All in favor, right? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Next on for second reading, bill number 2021-03, an ordinance to revise Herman Municipal Code sections 605010, 615-020, and 615-070 to exempt vendors from the city's business license requirements and to impose a $10 fee on vendors. Any discussion? I do have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, a uh, question has come up. Now, it says not necessarily limited to vendors at festivals or special events, but uh, is this specifically for commercial use? I mean, is this something that anybody can get this and just do anywhere in Herman? Yeah, in other words, if uh, one of the organizations wanted to do a flea market, let's say, on the lumber yard parking lot, and they were bringing vendors in, that way those people do not have to get a license. But that is a commercial property. Well, it's a commercial property, but it can be... Let's say on the school parking lot. I mean, it can be uh, on the parking lot of the old IGA store. But not on, in a residential. Well, it, this does not apply to the garage sales, where you can have the two garage sales a year. This is for usually multi-dealers multi where there's a group, not just one, you know, uh, wine, the wine and witches and thing that they do. All those people had to get a vendor. Well, say I wanted to do a flea market in my backyard. I live in a residential neighborhood. Could we maybe say that it should be limited to commercial or city property but excludes all residential well, neighborhoods? Those are already regulated through the special event application. One, there's one for public property and there's one for private property. And yeah, there's some things that can't happen in residential zones. So that's already addressed through those applications. Okay. But that is in, in residential property only, right? So, I mean, I just, if if people don't see that in, in the private events, I, I wasn't sure. I had some of the same questions that, that Dave had asked, but also on the private events, I wasn't clear on what that would be. So just like Bruce was talking about, if an individual went to host for their own flea market and call people in, that'd be a private event because it's not city-sponsored, or it's not my fest, it's not October fest. Um, but could that be in their backyard? Then you go back to where this does not address the zone, everything zoning still is not being mess is not being tampered. You can't have a flea market in a residential neighborhood. Right. I'm sorry. You can't have a flea market in a residential. Correct. Okay. So we don't need to put it excludes all residential neighborhoods in this. No, because the other ones cover it. Okay. okay. I move Bill 2021-03 second row. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion's been made and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> So carried. Thank you. Next on for second reading, an ordinance to revise Herman Municipal Code Section 310.070, Operation of Vehicles on Approach of Authorized Emergency Vehicles. Any questions? I have a motion to approve. I'll make a motion. Ordinance 2021-4 be approved. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? So carried. Next is bill number 2021-05 for first reading. An ordinance to approve and ratify a lease agreement signed between the City of Herman, Missouri and Ford Motors Credit Company, LLC. I move 2021-05 first reading. Have a motion to have a second? I'll second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? So carried. Well, we need to do that one a second time. It's time, time sensitive. Since we have the car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bill number 2021 05 for second reading an ordinance to approve and ratify a lease agreement by and between the city of Herman, Missouri 
and Ford Motor Credit Company, LLC. Do I have a motion to approve? Item with Will, second row. Motion's been made, second please. Second. Motion's been made and second, all in favor aye. 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 Any opposed? Second. Move. Next, our first reading, Bill number 2021-06. An ordinance to approve contracts by and between the City of Herman, Missouri and Borlier Outdoor Advertising Company for promotional billboard signs. Okay, I have a motion. I'm can we can we have it explained why we're doing this to the citizens now? What this is for? What this is for? Mm -hmm. The billboard? Mm -hmm. That's for tourism, right? For tourism. Yes. Okay. Would you want to come up and explain to them what this is about? <laughs> Jennifer and I can both do that. Jennifer has been uh, working with me to get um, prices together for billboards. We do not have any billboards currently to get people to know where Herman is along I-70 and potentially one up on um, 63 South. So um, many of our tourism businesses, our destinations are definitely wanting billboards. And uh, we've been working on this for several several years, actually. <laughs> so we want to increase our visibility with a better quality billboard and increase from what we originally had when I came on board was two billboards. We want to go to five. Any other questions? Since Tammy's here. So I have a motion to approve. If you would like to read twice tonight, we would love it so we could expedite. Okay. Thank I you. move to approve bill number 2021-06, first read. Second. Motion made second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. We'll do a second reading on that, please. Bill number 2021-06 for second reading. An ordinance to approve contracts by and between the City of Herman, Missouri and Poirier Outdoor Advertising Company for promotional billboard signs. I move Bill 2021-06, second row. Motion been made. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion made and second. All in favor, right? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. We will. Okay. Old business. Anybody have any old business? I do. Uh, first off, um, I just want to make sure that when we start working on the budget for next year that we include the booster pump station at CETOL. Uh, secondly, that COVID numbers are down, but please continue to social distance, wear a mask in public, and wash your hands. And thirdly, please remember to clean up after your dog if they make a mess in someone's yard. Their neighbors won't call you out, so please be polite and clean up after your pets. Okay, any, any I have one thing just to add on Susan's. I don't know how many people here have uh, had their COVID vaccinations here in town. The uh, health department, along with the ambulance district and the Herman Hospital and Southwest Medical Associates. I, I, if I'm leaving anybody out, I apologize, but I've witnessed both of them doing the shots. They are like a well-oiled machine. They get people through, they get it done. They deserve our utmost respect and thanks for the efficiency in which they're doing it. It's absolutely amazing the number of people are getting done. So. Very well said. Thank you. They did like over a thousand vaccines in two days. Yeah, they've really been pushing through. So. And 11.9% of our county is vaccinated now. So we'll get there. Okay, any other old business? <clears throat> Move on. New business? I caught two residents in an act last week of being responsible citizens for our town and I'd just like to highlight the fact that people do care about Herman and one person was cleaning out rocks and leaves from a storm grate along the street because he didn't want it to rain or there'd be a lot of stuff there and cause the street to flood over and another person was just picking up trash and so she said whenever she walks she always takes a bag with her and picks up trash so I'd like to thank our citizens for being responsible and helping take care of our town. Good. Anything else? I have one new item. I'd like to bring it up so we can think about it for a couple weeks. Sure. And this this deals with the the newest mandate by the CDC, and that requires that all public transportation people mandate mask wearing. That includes 
buses, taxis, share rides, trolleys, shuttles. They, they are mandated to have their employees and their passengers to wear a mask. And since this is above our level of management, I, I want us to think about it, what do we want to do? And if we do that, per our city attorney, we would have to pass an ordinance and through the Gascony County Health Department, that is, he's getting more guidance from the state, but if we don't participate, it could lead to warnings, fines, if there's complaints, and up to including business license loss. Well, I can't speak for everybody, but I do know, being that the trolley is next to my business there, that uh, he has purchased, I think he told me 6,000 masks, and he does hand them out to Right. I think he said 40,000. There's a 40,000. Yeah, I, I don't remember. I just remember. It was a large amount. So, so he, yeah. he is being proactive. I don't know about uh, the Uber Uber or Lyft, what yeah. they're called. Share rides. The share rides. But Those. that's something new, and I, I think we should talk about it and make a decision as the city of Herman how we want to proceed with this mandate. It's not a recommendation, it is a mandate from federal government. I don't think you're right there, so we'll, we will discuss it, but I don't think it's a federal mandate. We are. Yeah. I don't CDC think they have the authority a, to do a federal mandate. CDC is a federal well, it's mandate. But they're not mandating. So are you talking about the Missouri State Senate Bill uh, no, 51 and 42, where they actually just passed a, a law stating that our uh, Senate is working on that, where uh, organizations like ours and the taxis and the trolleys are not liable for people that have uh, a contract COVID? Are you talking about that or something else? Because I've not heard anything something about that. This is by the CDC, which regulates the COVID vaccinations and all this good stuff. They have the ones that put out the math. You can get the information off of the internet, cdc.com. The CDC has the, the ability to mandate I don't, I don't think so. Would, excuse me, would, uh, in your opinion, is that something that we should be concerned about? Making a, uh, moving forward with it where it's on record as an ordinance? Or should we just? Uh, if the Board of Aldermen or the city wants to require uh, mask wearing on public transportation vehicles within the city uh, and if it wants the Herman Police Department to enforce it with fines and tickets and things then this then you guys and gal need to pass an ordinance uh, the CDC or the feds will get involved only if our local law enforcement asks them to uh, or if uh, there is a breach of the peace or unruly activities going on that we can't handle. Otherwise, it's, you know. Right, I understand. Yeah, I think that's a scare tactic. And I'm, I'm not sure that that's what's actually coming down. But I think, you know, for, for if you take a Southwest flight, I do think the CDC has the authority, or the federal, the feds agencies right. do have the authority right. to mandate it's it there. FAA. But, uh, but right. not, not for Herman Trolley. Or, well, as, as, as few, Entities that we have in town, I think if they uh, are responsible enough that they should take care of their business and provide that, I don't think that we need to come down and mandate and say you have to do that. But it's like that. It, it brought yeah. it out. Food no, that's right. Yeah, Investigated. It is online at cdc.gov, and they got broke down, and it does say what entities is designed as a public transportation. Right. And Gascony County Health Department's aware of it, and so is our Department, Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services. I do. Food for thought, and maybe in two weeks we everybody can gather their their bullets, and we can come to a meeting and discuss it. Okay. Do you, do you have some? I do. You look I like forgot. you do. <laughs> yeah, I I are you well, on I this? No. Oh, different subject. Something else. That's all I had, sir. Okay. Okay. So, I'll let you all take one of these. Um, we talk, we always talk about complaints and incidents. And 
this is a form for incidents because as far as I know, we don't have any kind of form for incidents and reporting. And Marlon, I don't want to put you on the spot, but can you tell us what a complaint is and what an incident is? Well, the complaint is if someone calls in saying a piece is disturbed by music or whatever, they call the police and dispatch an officer there to take care of it. Um, I guess an incident is pretty much um, kind of the same lines, but like I've said before, if someone has a complaint or anything about something's going on right then, you can call the police then. You know, filling out a form and turn it in two or three days later, and I get it, then there's nothing we can do about it pretty much at that time. But if someone's peace is being disturbed or anything is going on that's breaking the law, they feel they need to call the police, they call the police and we'll get an officer there to take care of them. I believe their name if they don't want to, but they say, can you send an officer to have them turn music down or the disturbance and the crowds being too rowdy or something? We'll get there and take care of it and document it in CAD with our dispatch, a certain address, and whatever the officer found that he needed to do. So if they don't want to leave their name or don't leave their name, is that considered a complaint? Yes, if they call in and say, can you will document it in CAD that on this date and this time an officer was sent there because someone called in and we investigated. Okay, and then, um, I lost my train of thought. So they can make a complaint or they can talk about an incident and you, you will show up and do something about it or talk to them or figure it out. Yes. Okay, and they don't need to leave their name. Not unless they won't charge us follow. Like I said, if your piece is being disturbed, you won't charge us follow. You have to provide your name because you're the victim. So you have to go to court. So unless charges are filed. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then well, I guess... If you call in to say, send an officer, you know, it's 10, 11 o'clock at night, the music's too loud, I can't sleep, you send an officer over here to this address or whatever it is in city limits. Okay. We'll put it in our CAD system with dispatch. We tell the officer to respond to that location and an anonymous call came in and they go take care of and see what, what's going on. Okay, so if someone would make an anonymous call, then when we check on complaints, would that show up in the complaints? Yeah, show up as anonymous, and then that address on this date and time, what the officer's uh, deposition was, or how you handled it for that date. Good, thank you. Um, we made this form up a while back and didn't do anything with it. I did, but if this is how we're gonna handle it, I don't think we need an incident form. Well, by looking at this form, this is, if somebody's going to take the time to fill this out, the incident's already taken place on a date that's not mm -hmm. where they can't go and investigate it. So this yeah. Yeah. would not So we don't need it. The chief has said repeatedly, and everybody that talks to me, I tell them that, call the police. You don't have to dial 911, call 2211, talk to a dispatcher. They will dispatch a police officer. Bitching about it on Facebook. No. Or telling us a week later does no good. Nope. Immediately. You have a cell phone, it takes pictures, it takes video, it records audio. If it's going on, put it on your phone, call the chief, you can send it right to his phone. Okay. That's I just evidence. Want a clarification. Okay. All right. Any other new business? Okay, we'll move on to motions. First, it is minutes. Uh, motion to approve the minutes. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Second. Motion's oh. been made and seconded. Rick and have it. Yeah. That's yours. Oh, okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So carried. Uh, invoices for payment. Move we pay the bill. Motion been made. Second. I'll second. Motion made and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Pay the bill. Condition use permit renewal for the Herman Worst House, Mike Sloan, outdoor liquor consumption. Mike? Can I put this? Yes, down? yes, it should be up there anyway. I didn't want to block your view. So, so Mike Sloan shows up on the new camera. Mike Sloan, Herman Worst House, just here to present myself for any questions, comments, or concerns on the two applications before you. Oh, is there two? Yes. yes. You have the, the condition of use permit renewal, and then we have the uh, seating permit renewal. I show no issue with for complaints about the liquor consumption. I will move to approve it. I would prefer to wait until after March 5th. On March 5th, we're meeting with MoDOT.
to have them look at the intersection there of Highway 100 or First Street and Gutenberg because of traffic congestion. So I would prefer to wait till after that. What would that have to do with this permit? Traffic congestion, congestion of people walking through there. For this is I don't see the connection. Yeah, I don't see the connection because it's for under his pavilion there or his. They're not walking around with it. They're just no. right there under his no, control. They're not. But my thing is, people walking through there and it's crowded. And I would prefer to hold all of this up until after we see what the traffic flow shows through there with MoDOT. I still, well, I still don't understand what that has to do. You with have a winery right there. You have the tin mm -hmm. mill. You have the brewery and all that there. You... Exactly. And if any of them were here, I'd be asking for the same thing to just wait until after March 5th so we can get to see the flow of traffic and if there are ways to divert the pedestrians to make it safer. I have a motion on the floor. I move to approve. Do I have a second on that? I have no second. So you're gonna you're so I'm gonna, done. I'm no, done. you're not done. No, he, he's he's <laughs> no, I'm done. There's no no, no reason to go further until until we're ready or until you're ready. Well, I think. I, I don't. I, I just don't understand. I don't, I don't understand, understand, I don't understand your 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 thought process on what you're what you're talking about. Because I want to hold this because of pedestrian traffic. I, there may be things that need to be adjusted. One, one moment. Yes, sir. Let the police chief talk, please. The only issue at that intersection, usually during the year, is the main issue usually during October. I mean, just because of the large crowd that comes in that month. With everything there, there's a lot. Of, that's obviously a lot of traffic right there. But during the rest of the year, I mean, it's just an average weekend. It's not an issue. But obviously, as far as businesses or anything moving through there, it's usually just October best is when you have that large come in as a weekend. That's kind of just people going to all places in that area. So I don't, I don't see the the crowd size or anything being an issue all during the year except usually October best. I feel with tourism increasing as much as it has and hopefully to continue, we need to make sure that all of our streets are safe. And there was a complaint filed back in July about the smoke and stuff from other people that complained, so there were complaints. This is an alcohol permit. All this goes together, though. We can't approve one and not the other because that wouldn't be fair. Well, I think what we got here before is we had a motion made and there's been no second. It's not further discussion. We have to move forward, which means there is no motion. Tricia, when does the permit actually expire? Or has it expired? You know? I would say the end of the, end of the month. End of this month? End of February? February. Can't we just extend what we have, or like we did with guest houses, and we didn't approve them for six months? I'm not saying that for years, but just till after we have our meeting. So today is meeting. the eighth, eighth, fifteenth, twenty second. March eighth would be the next time we have. If we're not going to. Uh, make a motion to approve this tonight, my recommendation would be that we set up an actual public hearing, quote unquote, uh, for the next meeting. Uh, because my, my position has always been, obviously, for whether or not you issue a conditional use permit, you have a hearing and invite everybody to say what they want to say, etc. I think we ought to do the same thing if we're proposing not renewing one, it's the same as taking it away. And we shouldn't do that without giving the applicant an opportunity to um, present himself at a hearing. So will we do the same thing then to Tin Mill when they they come up for renewal? Will we do the same thing for yeah. Blackshire? Yeah. Yeah. Is this Hall? before March yeah. 5th? Are any of them expiring before March 5th? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Um, no. So what difference? Well, I'm sorry. So oh, what do they even have conditional use permits? They, they, they do outdoor liquor consumption permits. 
Most places are bars. This is a restaurant, so someone can have a beer with their food. They're not sitting there all day getting drunk. No. This allows them to have a, a drink with their dinner. Yeah. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't understand what's going on here. Yeah, well, I, I don't either. I maybe we could approve the lot, the outdoor liquor consumption one, but I won't. I don't want to approve the seating one then. Well, we can discuss uh, that one when we get to it. But I don't okay. understand the. Yeah, I think you got the cards to this horse. What's that? I think the cards before the horse, as far as what Susan was trying to to uh, request. Is not the outdoor li uh, liquor consumption, but the seating permit and the how the cust uh, customers stack up and and how it uh, traffic flow is. But you got to remember, we've already approved the way everything is done there. So I mean, we have approved what he's doing. True. He's he's within his legal. Uh, I don't know what terminology to use, but he's in business. We've approved it. I, this just does not make any sense to me at all. I, I don't. I don't understand why we would jeopardize his business just because you want to do a survey of traffic at an intersection that that doesn't have anything to do with people sitting and eating in front of his establishment. It just it does not make any sense to me at all. They're totally unrelated items. So. I you all approved, um, I sent a letter to him on February 11th of 2020 saying that your outdoor seating um, application was approved. Um, we approved his current um, seating arrangement just a few months ago. Um, but there were stipulations for that help between that one those with the smoke pipe and uh, so um, I can address that the building inspector and the code enforcement officer have been out to look at Mike's place. The, there was some confusion apparently. Um, Lee believes he told you that you needed a building permit and uh, for the smoker. Lee issued a building permit for the awning and the porch. Um, that was fine, but he needed an additional one for uh, the smoker, which Mike did not apply for. But Lee has gone and looked at it and thought the smoker itself was okay. There remains an issue with the flue. Uh, according to Lee, it needs to be 10 foot tall, and it is like 7 foot 6 inches. Um, and the smoke is still gathering under the awning. And so the concern between Lee and Bob Sitton was that that might create some nuisance issues with the smoke. But yes, this board did approve um, his uh, seating arrangement, his fence and his awning, and his porch at prior meeting. The motion that was made is still dead at this time. You don't have a second. I don't know why we're de debating on the Because I want to talk about it. Yeah. And I do, too. I, think I do not be understand it. the reasoning behind I'm not doing this. I, I mean, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm just baffled, I guess. Is. Does anybody want to ask me any questions? Yeah, I do. Right. How long have you, you already have an existing one, right? Uh, existing one. Uh, how about yeah. liquor? Uh, for almost 10 years. For almost 10 years. Why all of a sudden is this a problem? That's what I don't understand. And I've seen this time and time again when there's businesses here in Herman that are starting to expand and starting to make money, all of a sudden they get attacked. Why? Mike has been doing a legitimate business for a long time down there and he's wanting to expand. What's that going to do? That's going to bring more revenue into Herman. And now they want to attack you. Um, if this you. person speaking, shouldn't he stand up and give his name so that everyone knows he's saying? I'll be saying. glad to. My name is Joe Gleason, and I don't understand what the issue is here. Why it's a problem all of a sudden? I, I don't. I don't understand. I'm kind of like with Dave and, and, and the mayor. Hell, if I could second it, I would second it. Well, there's two issues here. The first issue is dead. So there's no sense in going to the second issue because of the makeup of this board. Um, I have a lot of answers. 
I'm not willing to give those answers with the way this meeting is being presented in a uh, not very professionally run biased manner. Bias manner. It's, it's, you know, I don't need to make a living in Herman, Missouri. Did you get a building permit? I have piles of paper over there. I have building permits. I have letters of appropriateness. Lee, now that's a good question. Finally, we're getting a good question. Not for the what? Lee and I had a conversation in, well, let's back up. Are we talking about the first resolution? I mean, the first deal, to, are we on the second one now? Oh, no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It relates to the second part of my sequence of events tonight. Are we done with the first one? Well, actually, the, the building permit and that is not even has anything to do with what we're None talking the, about. Yeah, I'm I'm saying we're talking. I should answer that question. And I, I think part of the problem, the second was asked for before we had a chance to do any discussion to get some of those answers brought up. It was cut off. Uh -uh. Man, it's terrible. Okay, parliamentary procedure. Well, one more people. thing. This whole damn mess, I'm on the Landmarks Commission. I am, a, I guess, a senior member of the Board of Aldermen. I've been in every meeting that Mike has come to to get this done. Now, if there's confusion, I'm part of it because I thought he had everything he needed to do all of this. I had no idea that there was another permit required. He went in these meetings, he asked, he had it. If there was confusion, he's not the only one confused. When I talked to our ordinance enforcement officer, he said, well, you, in order to have that, need that permit, you've got to do this, this, and it's got to be this way. So there's several different ways this could have gone. But now we're back to the simple outdoor liquor consumption. I don't understand what the problem is with that. Though. As far as the seating permit, we're in the middle of a pandemic, folks. We're supposed to be helping these businesses, not hindering them. Our rules were written pre-pandemic, pre-COVID. Yes, we need to make we need to change some of them. His outdoor seating. Susan, I heard you say in several meetings, social distance, social distance. He's trying to do that. And we're sitting there hindering him. There's other businesses in town wanting to do the same thing. They're fighting for their very lives. You're going to put them out of business because somebody has a handrail attached? Come on. As as Let's be know, realistic. Nobody said anything about putting anybody on a seat. What do you think this is? And my thought, David, is that we should be able to ask questions, express our opinions, not get upset, let everybody talk, and figure this out. Well, and the Board of Alderman has the right to ask questions, to change their mind, and to make sure that we're doing everything right for businesses and citizens. He's in the commercial district. I know. Nobody lives right there. How do you he know? wants to be able to serve an alcohol with a meal outside. What well, maybe, I don't understand what the problem with that. The horse before the cart. I agree with Rick. But what do you have to say? <laughs> I don't really have anything to say other than if the board is inclined to not renew either one of these licenses, then we need to have a hearing uh, where Mr. Sloan is able to present his seating plan and, and everything else where everybody is entitled uh, and encouraged to ask as many questions as they want so that he can answer them with a court reporter present. and then if the board is inclined to not renew either license, uh, state the findings, so to speak, or the reasons, as the gentleman put it earlier, if it was renewed seven times in a row, why isn't it being renewed this time? Uh, I think the judge would probably ask the same question. Can we do like we did in the past? Can we just extend what he has now and then have well, the meeting? Well, that's why I asked time. Tricia when it actually expired so that he's not running the risk of exactly. operating without a permit. Exactly. If it's, I won't accept an extension. It's either all or done. If, if the permit, um, it went, when does it expire? The 24th? 28th of November. 
28th. So if we have this hearing meeting on the 22nd, well then we're still in time. I'll say just present the, uh, the motion again. Well, I don't know if we can parliamentary procedure. I'm trying to. You got to finish the one that's already out here. I made the motion. Somebody's got to second it or it dies. All right. Now I'll second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. aye. So, you break the time, Mr. I break the time. Well, I'm an I because I think we need to support our local our, our local businesses, whether it's Mike or anybody else, to, to the fullest extent. And the main reason I'm going with it is I just don't understand what your request has to do with any of this. That I'm sorry, I just I don't get it. It's okay. So that's been passed, but I do want to put some input here is that Susan had alluded to and I want to make sure that we as a board of aldermen have the right to ask questions. Correct. What we did yesteryear doesn't already make sure that it's good today. I know Tricia said that the BOA had approved the seating. I didn't. I've been here two years. I haven't seen it except the new one that was sent out for this meeting. You haven't seen the new one that was sent out for this meeting? The one you sent out is the newest one I've right. seen. He got the formal drawing, but last time in March when we just renewed this, um, you all approved the fence, the attached fence, right. the awning, the porch. You, I think you voted no, but everybody else voted yes, if my memory serves me correctly. <clears throat> and back then when we approved that, what was the seating? Was it for 24? Um, I don't know the exact number off the top of my head. No, it was not. Yeah, we're moving on to the next part of this. Which is the part that I, that I think really okay. fits more about what you yes. were bringing up, and that's why. Okay, let's, let's drop this and we'll move on to the outdoor seating permit renewal. Is there any questions? <laughs> I know. Before we move forward. Go for it. Well, no. I'm, I'm, no. I'm, Let's try and do it the right way. Oh, you know, my the last one. Step there. I, I think the, one of the things that, that Susan was alluding to, uh, and I think it's a serious concern, that when I've come by during Oktoberfest and other busy times, it's a bottleneck right there, and people are walking out into the street. People are uh, between where you have your, your awning and walking up those stairs and getting over on uh, Gutenberg. There are always people walking out in the street. Uh, there, and it somewhat uh, tends to be a dangerous situation. And I think that's what she's wanting to do, is bring in someone to give us some advice as to what we can do to make that less dangerous. Okay, so can I address that part? Wait, right. Well, I also, just to make a comment on what you're saying there, I understand what you're saying, but during Oktoberfest and my fest, come down to my shop and watch the intersection at Gutenberg, same situation. You have tons of people coming out of the concert hall. The sidewalks are packed. You've got all these, these little shops in that there. You have the same situation at that intersection that you do down there. I mean, so I don't understand why it's all about that intersection. No, that I don't, intersection I don't think that's the case. Stop either. Yeah, I don't think that's the case. I think right there at Mike's place, it narrows down to such that people are having to go single file to get through there or go out into the street. And or go so up on the ramp. It is or just even going up on the ramp, before you go up on the ramp, you have to get single file to go to go up there. It is just yeah. the Let's let Mike yeah. address it then. Yeah. So, so, didn't mean so, to interrupt you, I'm sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. So way back when, I talked to Mark and David, and uh, we, we talked about we're going to start on Gutenberg. That's where the traffic starts. It doesn't start in front of my place. It starts on Gutenberg in and out, sideways, whatever. So people were walking down the streets there, right? And so the reason they were walking down the streets is because it's my parking lot. And it's my private parking lot. I allow people to pull into and walk on my parking lot. I don't like it. Because I have deliveries, I got things going on, it's a busy place. Next to my parking lot, there's a about a one foot little culvert dip, what do you want to call it? And then there's the road. Garden, yeah. So people walk in the road. 
So I asked Mark and David, and they came down, and they drew the most beautiful set of yellow lines as a temporary sidewalk. Will people follow it? No, but it's there. All right? So it's there. The city's doing their job. They're there. So now they either turn right, go towards Hermanoff, or turn left, and goes up the little hump by Hunkins. Now when you measure that little area by Hunkins, it's eight foot. He's got a, a steps that's been there for 150 years or so. That step is at about 14, 15 inches. <clears throat> so now that eight foot is less. Now when it gets to my place, and I made this presentation a long time ago, I don't know where you all were at, it opens up to nine foot. So we didn't want a, a smaller funnel, we want a bigger funnel. So it actually, you're wrong, it opens up to a bigger nine foot. Then it goes down to, again, I had this presentation made, you guys all approved it, five foot, one inch. I measured that. That's what the uh, ADA requirement is for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I measured it too, it is. Well, you're, you're up there at night measuring stuff, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do when you have time. Private, <laughs> private property too on, on, my, on my side, you got to be careful. Oh, good the city right away. No, you're on my property. I got cameras. Does that answer your, your question? Does that answer your question? That, you have all have looked at this already. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we have. It, it answers my question, but I think that's part of the reason that Susan's always had a concern about yes. that spot. So I went down to look, and what you're talking about, it opens up, it opens up. But there's a spot there where it doesn't open up, that it does come Five down. Five foot, one inch, right. or more. Yeah. But that, that corner, that intersection, has been a problem my entire life. Right. That's especially at festival time. And that's why Susan has tried to get somebody to come down. And that's one of the And that's, why, that's all we're talking about. It was a problem long before Mike moved in. There. Right. It, it was a problem when that was an auto fort store. It was a problem when it was a two-story derelict building that used to be a bar there. It was a problem when that was an auto dealership where the Fest Hall is right now. It was a problem when that was a Zephyr Station where the Hop Garden is now. It was a problem when it was MFA over there instead of the Tin Mill. Nothing has changed right. just because Mike moved in. Right. Mike, and, they, and it's not personal toward Mike I, from Susan. From Mike. Apparently it wasn't. We weren't going to renew his uh, no, application because of it. No. no, this is safety. And you know what? Yeah, maybe back then there was a problem, but it's a lot worse now. The best thing and the city can do is put a full-time of, officer down there. And the blessing is having tourists and having businesses that people flock to. But we need to make it safe. And that's all I'm asking. I don't want to shut anybody down. I don't want to take anybody's liquor license. I just want it to be safe. That's going to require, we tried to get stop sign there for years, and MoDOT didn't think it was necessary. They that us at every turn trying to do our thing. Yeah, that would be, if people, if people walking, if people driving would just stop so people can get across. But you don't. You get people wandering out in the streets all over First Street. Mm -hmm. uh, but that stop sign there would help get the people across without anybody getting hurt. And why not see if this man can help us? If there's something that can be done. This is the school park. Is that made for the water mm -hmm. from this? Anybody else yeah, have yeah, any yeah. questions for Mike? It's uh, but it's even if water that water guy water can water make water recommendations, we're still not going to hold Mike up. No. Fritz Ford is getting this approved so he can move forward um, because I can't think of any changes that will affect his situation. I just would like to see if there's something he may suggest something that Mike could do to make it better. We don't know. I can move. No, don't, don't say that we don't want that. I don't blame you one bit. Yeah, but I know that he doesn't have to threaten things like that when exactly. when Susan's so trying to come up with some legitimate right. alderman well, questions or why not just you guys come over here and make all the decisions when you're going to get <laughs> tested. We've already discussed all this. <laughs> you know, we have the right to ask questions and look for the best interest, interest of everyone, other businesses and Can citizens. And there, there has been a complaint and that was it said that it says there's no complaint. There was a complaint. So we need to address it for everyone. And what was the complaint about? The complaint was about smoke and bugs. And that was made back in July. That has nothing and to do with seating. What we're addressing. No, but 
It has nothing to do with what but we what are addressing what here. Outdoor kind of seating plan? permit renewal. Okay. Okay. That's one of those incidents that the uh, code enforcement officer will be called on to. On the, on the smoke and so forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is there any other questions? Bob Sitton has made several visits to my facility and has given me a letter. You guys probably have copies of it. Discussion on. Sorry. The outdoor seating, or we are on the outdoor seating. That's what we're trying to to accomplish here. There's no other questions. I I don't have questions, but I got some point point of interest. Of course, in my nose, because he accused me, and I accused me, but pointed out the animosity he has towards me for doing my job. But according to our outdoor seating ordinance and tag on what Susan said that the outdoor seating permits have to limit adverse impact upon pedestrian traffic, neighboring businesses, and other uses of right of way. And as Susan indicated, we did have a neighboring business voice a concern about the excessive smoke. I know the smoker is outside the 12 inch, 12 foot city yeah. right of way. Yes, it does because it's underneath a common roof and it does bother the neighboring customer. But it doesn't concern the seating. That's, what I'm That's a different issue. This is all, if you want to read the ordinance, it's right there in the ordinance, the first paragraph. So it does. <laughs> matter with the outdoor seating. It says limit any adverse impact upon pedestrian neighboring business. Did she complain about the seating? She complained about the business and the cup doesn't just include seating, it includes everything. And But you gotta remember since she's made that complaint he has redone his smoker and that was when that other one was out there, so he has addressed that issue. Is it a hundred percent solved yet? Not apparently not with the smokestack, yes. but that okay, maybe is it, it had, maybe it has up been. Above the building? <clears throat> yeah, so what I'm saying is that complaint has been addressed. I want to hear how he addressed it. How I addressed what? The complaint of the smoke. Is your smokestack gonna go up above the roof so no. that it doesn't go? No, it does not go above the roof. Then what's where's the smoke gonna go? Right up to the roof. How? Because it's underneath the awning. How? It's a pipe. There is a pipe? Yeah. And it's hooked up? Of course it's hooked up. I mean, it's hooked to your pipe and it goes all the way up. It goes all the way up, about 20 feet. Into the air, above mm -hmm. your awning. Mm -hmm. It goes into the air. Yes. It's above basically. the awning? No. Under the awning? I said below. I'm not cutting a hole in my roof. In the roof based the upon what Lee had recommended, that need to be the minimum of 10 foot, and that time that is correct. was only seven That foot. is correct. Okay. You recommend a 10. It's not 10. We're okay, way I can't. We're way off the subject again. <laughs> You're all talking about smoke. When, <laughs> Thank you. When we're talking about seating, and what I was addressing is the complaint, he addressed that by removing the portable Barbecue pit, put it around the back side of the house. That, that particular complaint was addressed at that time, or a little bit later. He went through all the process to put everything else in. Let's move forward and talk about the outdoor seating renewal and get this over with. We have other business to conduct. Yes, we do. I, I got some highlighted points, because this is from the 610-135 city ordinance on outdoor seating. I explained that first point. Here it is also, it's in section three, subsection C. No object shall be permi permitted around the parameter of the outdoor seating area, which would have effect on obstructing uh, pedestrian path. It says that you cannot have an object around the perimeter of your outdoor seating, which is, i.e., a fence. And yeah, that's not obstructing the pedestrian path. That's just around your seating area. 
It says no object shall be permitted around the perimeter of the outdoor seating area, which would have the effect of obstructing the pedestrian path, which it does not. So that address is Rick's concern. And it does, when we go from a 12-foot sidewalk down to the 5, it kind of looks like a, a cattle corral where we're bringing them in. But he was approved for outdoor seating. He was allowed to use that area for that. Do we require a fence for the conditional use permit for the outdoor liquor? So I'm sorry, what? The fence is required. Okay. Yeah. And the building permit was obtained for the awning and, and, and everything else. Yes. So you've got a permitted structure with the awning and the post. You've got a permitted, even required fence. So is the purpose of not approving the outdoor seating permit, the, the, the seating is within the fence, am I right? Between the fence and the building? Yes, sir. And there was a problem before. It, which it is enclosed within that fence. So if the outdoor seating permit is not granted, are we thinking he's going to tear all that down? Well, in his original deal, he had posts with a chain. And his, as patrons do, they want a little extra room, they'd move it out. And they were actually lessening the walkway. This is they, now, they, they can't move it. The fence you have now is more sturdy as what we had before for the previous eight years was not. Uh, you approved it. You approved it. Somebody approved it. But that, I guess so, so the, that the question is what does not approving the permit, how is not approving the permit going to promote a more orderly and, and roomy flow through there for pedestrians? I can't imagine how it would when we've already got a permitted, allowed structure built there that is what squeezing it down to five feet. This whole thing is about a seating permit. Well, and I just wish, I wish we had the transcripts of past meetings because you said you were going to vent it up above your building so that no, it doesn't bother that. people. No, I didn't say that. You said it would be closed where the customers no. could see their food cooking. And it, it is. They can see their food cook. Yeah, but the, the door opens up. So yeah, it's, it's a window. glass window. And the door swings open that they can get to. It, it, it swings open, yes, so sir. So what would you do if lead requ the building inspector requires you to make it 10 feet? It, it is of over 10 feet. Okay, because when he measured it last, it was seven foot six inches. It is over ten foot. So did you do something since he inspected it? Yes. Okay. 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 So there's a couple, of, and there again, this is my prerogative of asking questions, and if I'm going to be belittled by doing my job, so what is this? You're not being belittled, sir. You just now to point out that come onto my property after. Mr. Police has brought up. The fence is not required around there. Actually, our ordinance says no object shall be around the parameter of the outdoor seating. Then also in here it says no table, chairs, or other parts of the outdoor seating area shall be attached, chained, or any manner affixed to any tree, post, sign, or other fixture, curb, or sidewalk in or near the permitted area. And again, it says affixed to. And then also in section, I know we've talked about it, it does <coughs> stipulate no cooking in the outdoor seating area. I know his smoker's in the 17 inches he has beyond the city's 12 foot sidewalk. But by being underneath a common roof, and with the smoke, the doors opening up on it, Therefore, to my opinion, that becomes part of the outdoor seating area because it shares a common roof over. Doesn't the food go in and out inside the building? Mm -hmm. No, it goes out, it goes in on the outside because I've seen the doctor stocking it. So when you had the door up sliding in meat, how did you do that from the outside? Open the door. Yeah, but well, that's what David just yeah, asked. Yeah, I just said. And it says no permanent storage of chairs, tables, dishes, outdoor seating area, equipment is allowed. Yeah, but the equipment is on his property. It's not actually in the outdoor seating area. If you read further in that section, which is letter P, section 3, no, allowed in the permitted area, in any portion of the public right-of-way. 
are outside the structure confines of the building in which the restaurant is located. And that is outside of the structure where the building is located. So I, that's just point that I highlighted in there. I'm not. I'm all in favor for Mike doing a good business too. What I'm trying to do is, if we have an ordinance and it stipulates these things, and we don't follow them, then we need to either rewrite the ordinance or do away with it. Well, number M, I can fix real quick with the word permanently. But no tables or chairs in our building shall be permanently attached, chained, or in any manner permanently affixed to any tree post sign or whatever the rest of the nonsense is there. But uh, as I said, all this stuff was written pre-COVID. I have no problem with altering it. But for right now, we just need to approve his seating area. If they're not in up to date with our ordinance, I don't know how we how, how we can. We've already done it. He's already got the seating area. But we're just re re, re, re things confirming it. If you have to notice, things have changed. The, the ordinances and laws of yesteryears and things have changed today. And if we just continue to re, re, just automatic renew things and not update things, well, then let's update it. But I think we've already set a precedent by allowing him to have the outdoor seating. David? I don't have the ordinance in front of me that Jim's referring to, I guess I can tell you. Thank you. That's all I'm saying is, and I've said it for the two years I've been here, if we have an ordinance, let's enforce it. If we can't enforce it, let's redo it or do away with it. So are there tables or chairs attached or chained or in any other manner affixed to a tree? No. A post? Yes. Tables. No, not tables the, or chairs. The railing of the fence is attached. That's not mentioned. Are there any tables or chairs permanently or affixed to a tree? No. A post? <laughs> not tables and chairs. Okay. A sign. And another fixture. No. No. The curb. No. The sidewalk. No. Then how is he violating that? Which one were you reading? He's reading M. Oh, section M is other parts of the outdoor seating area. The fence would be part of the outdoor seating area that I don't remember the board ever approving. The last time I know I okay. Well, to... is the fence attached to a tree? No. Is it attached to a post? Yes. Whose post? Several posts. My post. 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 My post. Is it attached to like a city white post? No. A city street sign? No. Any city structure whatsoever? That, in my opinion, that's what that was meant to okay. apply that's to. Fine. That you so can't have you sign. can't have your outdoor seating area and have a city white pole or a street sign or something like that and make that one of your fixed corners and attach your fence to, to that structure. Okay. That's cool. The, the purpose of his fence. And, and besides that, it, I, if we already gave him a building permit for this structure, including the fence, that ship is sailed. Thank you. Move to approve. Well, I have one more question. In July, you had uh, seating for 24, and now you, had 40, you have 44. Have you measured it out? I, uh, I, gave you, I gave Trisha thing back in May or June. Yeah, and it's, I've got it here. This was... And it's just, what was that number? But I it, hand wrote it on there, 44 people. Just so you know, this ordinance says the estimated chair count per table may vary within the prescribed. And the, way, yeah. the, the process is this, what you have in your hands. It's zero people to 44 people. And I just asked because in July it said 24. And now it says 44, so I wanted to no, make sure. No, it says sure 0 to 44. I'm still talking about from July. I don't care about that. Okay, I'm We're just, doing and a new, and I'm just new asking, process. I'm just asking, and the flow in there and everything is good, and you've got it spaced out so that people can walk through there, and that's all I'm asking. With emergency exits. Mm -hmm. Emergency exits from the fence? Yeah, in case they want to get out fast. 
So they can get out on the ends or they can get out in the middle there. Yeah, in case there's a fire or mm -hmm. shooting or stabbing or something. Oh, Lord, let's hope not. <laughs> okay, any other questions? I do have one question. It kind of segues to Susan's. On this new drawing, it's very nice, I have to admit. I can draw it. Anyhow, it's not. Thank you. You got down here the maximum number of tables 11. 11. Now, in your drawing, you have 12. That I couldn't count. <laughs> and the maximum of 44 stools. Now, back based upon how you have it designed here is 41 chairs. And the reason I might be nitpicking here, but I believe over the two years I've been here, every there's been a lot of things been nitpicked and swept underneath the rugs. I want to make sure if we approve, which I ask the same thing of another person, is what's on here is what it's going to be. No, it could change. And I know there can be a variance. Yes, sir. But if I approve this today, it says in red and white, maximum 11, but your picture's got 12. How many, how many trash cans do I have on there? Right now, you, on here, you got four. Okay, so that's zero to four. Zero to four trash cans, seasonal. But that, that's the only concern I've seen. Like I said, congrats, that is a very nice diagram. Perfect, but I did notice that. I went, Wait a minute, there's 12 tables and it says a maximum of 11. The maximum means you will not go over that amount. Zero to 44 chairs. Now, maximum number of 44 schools. But that was a comment that I noticed and it caught my eyes. And this is the first one I, I have seen since back in August when we asked them for a current diagram and that night you took a pen and drew squares around the round tables and mr polite even asked that said well, it's been asked for a new drawing that was the last one i'd ever seen at that time until this one so there's going to be 12 tables and 44 chairs or stools. Okay. Right? okay so you, you won't so it just, it's, the picture is different from the thing, but there are 12. Okay, any other questions? Move to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I second. have a second? Second. Motion been All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay. I make a motion to approve also. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to item E, approved bid from Brooks Brothers for a pipe trailer. Can you explain what this is used for? Sure. This is to put 500 feet coils of uh, high density polyethylene pipe uh, on a trailer to be moved for uh, either conduit for electric, gas line to be uh, installed in the ground. It also has a thing called a line tamer, which takes the resilience out of the pipe makes it easier to handle. You have people getting hurt with uh, pieces of pipe when they cut it off. It comes up and slaps them in the head or wherever. So we've been needing this for about 20 years. It's in the budget. They get the 16,000 from the line item. They are going with not the low bid. They're going with a local, more local because of uh, its uh, proximity for parts and repairs. Instead of going to Iowa or go to Troy, Missouri to get it. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Move to approve. I'll second. Motion's been made and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So carried. Okay, we'll move on uh, no reports. We uh, have a motion to go into closed session, please. I make a motion to go into closed session. I'll second. Two, five. Second. 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 to deal with matters relating to fire, hiring, firing, disciplining, or promoting employees pursuant to section 610.0213, revised statute of Missouri. Motion to make. Second. Do we need a roll call? Yes. We have a second. Do we need a roll call? Aye. 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 Everybody said aye. <laughs> yep. We are now going into the session. We're going to turn the TV off. Put it on commercial. Yeah. Uh, Hope they have different music.
You need to do that. Five times. Time. Super Bowl. Well, he's got to be better than what they did. I can wear a 